Because we are back this week with the morning news. This is your morning news. And we're cooking. So we're going to start here because Raul Paul, who I've, I've grown a little liking. I've taken a little like, a little liking to a little bit. He's been speaking a lot of truth lately. Uh Oh, <laughs> people better get prepared. <laughs> Listen to this. This is from Udot today. Legendary investor and market expert Raul Paul has waded into the incessant predictions going on in the digital currency ecosystem. Well, here's the difference. He has a multitude of very advanced, very well-educated advisors. That's a big, big difference. Who they get paid, quite handsomely, I might add, to do nothing but research all week, all year. So I think that he know a little something. So when he speaks, ah, don't get me wrong, he has his biases. Everybody has their biases, and you have to battle against that, to be fair. But he speaks some truth sometimes. The sun shines on a dead dog's backside every once in a while. Oh, oh a broken clock is, is right at least twice a day. Yes. So... Mr. Powell can tell some truth some of the time. It's early in the morning. You see, I got my workout gear on. So, you know, I'm about to go work out in a little bit. Yeah, I got my, this is my day off. I get to go do some things. I don't have to handle business all day like I usually do. So I'm feeling real energized. Taking to his official X account, Rob Paul said he believes that there is a greater, greater than Quote, 20% chance that this cycle in crypto and exponential age tech is in everything, everywhere, all at once adoption cycle. Do you understand what he's trying to say? Man, let me tell you, this is not financial advice. Let me make that loud and clear before I voice my opinion. We're about to get paid. There's a, oh man, they keep telling people there's a ton of capital going to flow, flood into crypto. They're saying it's coming from tokenization. They're saying it's coming from Wall Street. And we see them, uh, the, the encroachment. We see them coming ever closer to that point. We see them taking over. You're bearing witness to it. It's just a matter of time, a matter of, of, of when. It's already occurring all at once. There's going to be multiple winners. And I have to say that because there's so many people, they come in the comment section every day and they, they, they tell me about one crypto. This one crypto is going to win. This one's going to win or that one's going to win. I can respect it. I just humbly disagree. No, there's going to be multiple winners. Um, and if people position themselves correctly, who knows? You know, it might be good. It might be good. Not financial advice, but things might be um Looking a little bit better. All at once. Mm, mm, mass adoption coming. Right. So here it says he assumes that the crypto market will see massive institutional inflows. Now, I don't agree with his timeline it says by the end of 2030. No, 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 no. We are already seeing the build up here. 2024, 2025, in my humble opinion, are going to be two of the most crucial years. Right. Maybe it bleeds into 2026. But those two years, those three together. Holy smokes. I think everything's going to explode. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. And I think the people who have uh, uh, stayed with the projects they believe in, I think they're going to be uh, 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 handsomely rewarded if they are in projects that have great potentiality. Uh, it says the digital currency ecosystem is evolving at a very fast pace with intense volatility across the board. Riding on this, Raul Paul said, with this constant, constant evolution, that's why they can't catch us, by the way. They can't catch. They can't compete with XLM. They can't compete with XRP. They can't compete with Algorand, Quant, Flare, Chainlink, Solana, because we keep evolving. Um, so anyway. It says here, quote, it, it becomes near impossible to forecast economies. Oh, no, Let, let's no. It's very easy to forecast economies when you look into all of their financial data and their 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 policy. That's very easy. Crypto is something separate because crypto is going to be looked at as and I'll, 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 this is kind of strange to say, but I'll say it'll be looked at, in my humble opinion, as a safe haven where you can make money, not necessarily store of value, although you can use it, obviously, as a store of value, well, certain projects, but where you can make money as a lot of other industries are going to have a hard time 
Mark my words. Listen, you can have a hard time going this way, but you also have a hard time going that way. Like, for for example, the uh, housing industry has been having a great, a very hard time because everything's been going that way. Right. Uh, higher mortgage rates, you know, the whole spiel. But going the other way, there's a completely different problem. Like overabundance of supply and like, you know, uh, um, so there's something. So I'm just trying to show an example of there's negatives to both extremes and that's where the economies are going. So, uh, you know, let's move on to another article here because now I'm taking too much time here. I want to get to other articles. This article here is from Newsweek.com and it's titled Warren Buffett selling 28 28- Point seven billion dollars worth of stock. We've talked about this multiple times. Why is all the big big money sitting on cash piles? Hmm? Why are they selling everything that they can that's not important so they can sit on cash piles? What are they getting ready for? That's not those cash piles are not going to stay there forever. Now, my humble opinion, I think they're waiting to go. Well, first of all, let's just be clear. By way of proxy, I'm pretty sure they've bought at the base layer of everything in crypto already, setting up for them to scoop up the biggest gains of all time when the new financial system is launched. They know that, but they're sitting on cash piles so they can play. They can jump in and out of things when it's time, especially not just crypto, but also NFTs when the time comes. Believe me, um, uh, let me not say NFTs, but the tokenization of things. Yeah, they're getting ready to play, play, in my humble opinion. But let's read this article here. It says, according to the company's earnings, the Nebraska-based firm of the legendary investor and billionaire known as the Oracle of Omaha sold a net of $10.4 billion of stock in the first quarter of the year. In the second quarter, it sold close to $13 billion of shares and bought less than $5 billion. In the third quarter, it sold about $5.3 billion worth of stocks. Something is going on. Something is coming. Is what I, I keep saying. I believe it's wise for people to not just throw their money money around recklessly. Save some money. Save it. Hold on to a little bit of that. Protect your value because I think people may need it if, if things go south quickly and it looks like we're heading into a depressionary state globally, globally. Um, by the way, click that like button. I would greatly appreciate that. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic morning. And also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel down below. I would appreciate that as well. You know, I will. All right. It says, as Buffett is considered one of the greatest investors of all time. No need to praise. Why do they just they just keep praising people? Praise, 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 praise. And these people never listen to it. What's the point of it? But anyway, I guess it's supposed to bring significance to who Warren Buffett is. But let's keep going. It says, as well as one of America's richest men, his moves are closely observed and analyzed. Okay, so they brought some context to it. I, I, I respect that. For Steve H. Hank. A professor of applied economics at Johns Hopkins University who served on President Ronald Reagan's Council of Economic Affairs. Buffett's uh, Buffett's and Berkshire Hathaway's, quote, recent lightning lightning up on stocks and accumulation of a pile of cash of one hundred and fifty seven billion dollars. There's this cash pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know what's interesting? And I'm very, very proud of the regular people. And listen, I, I'm not a advocate of cash. In, in my hum, humble opinion, cash is trash. I prefer silver bars and gold bars. That's just my way. But I'm proud of the regular people because they also have been pulling their money out of the banks and sitting on cash piles. I, I, I'm sure they're not sitting on it. They probably have it somewhere safe, right? Um, probably not in their living quarters as well. Just be wise about that as well. But they also have been pulling money out and sitting on a little bit of cash. Very wise, right? That may come in handy. That may come in handy. You want something solid in your hand, right? There's a balance to everything. You want some investments and you want something solid at the same time to be prepared for everything. It says here, it's consistent with the fact that stocks are relatively pricey right now. We We have some stock market information coming up also. It says, but it is also crucially a sign, quote, That a recession is right around the corner, unquote. Not a recession. Believe me, a depression, a depression. Light maybe it may be a light depression, but a depression nonetheless, nonetheless. So now let's move on to a little bit more crypto news. This is from 
to Kedia.com and it's titled Coinbase now lets you send USDC for free. All right. Oh, well, there's like a caveat here. What is this caveat? Coinbase now lets you send USDC for free using iMessage. That's the iPhone thing, right? I use a Samsung now. It's been years since I've used an iPhone. I still have my iPhone, but I just don't use it. Um, I use a, a, a pretty good Samsung. Very powerful. Good for business. You need a good business phone that's super powerful um, if you're, if you're going to be in business and you're going to really try to make some capital. Uh, and it can handle a lot of applications at the same time that are running. Anyway, iMessage says using iMessage, WhatsApp, and Telegram. I haven't heard of Telegram in so long. Um, I just don't get good thoughts when I see <laughs> Telegram and WhatsApp. I just don't. Let me make this clear again, folks. I don't have a WhatsApp. I don't have a Telegram. I will never have. Never. I will never have a WhatsApp. I will never have a Telegram and try to contact anyone there. It's not going to happen. It's just not me. It's not my way. But um, I just don't trust. I just don't trust those things because there's so many scammy things that I've seen um, with WhatsApp and Telegram. But to each his own. Maybe it's actually safe and it just... There's a few bad eggs involved, right? That's possible. Crypto's like that, right? Crypto is very legit, um, very good, but there's a few bad eggs and people might look at crypto also like that, like paint the picture that everything is bad, but it's not that way. So maybe I'm wrong and WhatsApp and Telegram are actually okay. I don't know. I won't find out because I won't be using them. So <laughs> it says this, Coinbase, the leading cryptocurrency exchange platform has announced a new feature for its decentralized wallet app that allows users to send USDC, a stable coin pegged to the US dollar for free using popular messaging apps like iMessage, WhatsApp, Telegram, and more. Oh, they okay, do your thing, Coinbase. Keep doing a good job. I like that. This feature is powered by Wallet Connect, an open protocol that enables secure communication between decentralized applications and mobile wallets. All right, that's interesting. Let's move on to this last article here. I wanted to keep this video a little bit shorter, but we're flowing. We're flowing. You know, let's let everything take its natural flow. Natural is the best. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, natural is the best. It says here, this is from GwinnettDailyPost.com. You know, listen, a lot of what I do here, I got a, I get a lot of requests from the members only section, a lot of requests. So I like to honor those. Um, some people ask me to cover certain cryptos. I try to honor that. Some people uh, ask me to cover other information. And this is one of those things like someone asked me about the S&P 500. So if you notice from time to time over the last few weeks, I try to cover the S&P 500. And here we go. All right. It says analyst. Shout out to Asti, by the way. Shout out to Asti, by the way. One of our greatest uh, subscribers, one of our greatest um, members ever of all time. Appreciate every single member. But today, shout out to Asti. It says here, analysts who forecasted the S&P 500's rally has a new target for 2024. So let's find out what this target is. Let's see what they're talking about. It says, will the S&P 500 go up in 2024? The million dollar question on everybody's mind is if 2023's rally can continue into 2024, while many of the risks facing the market remain and the recession isn't yet off the table. <laughs> the recession, right. It says Lee's uh, latest forecast, this is the expert who's made many good calls in the past that they're getting information from now about 2024's S&P 500 run. It says Lee's latest forecast is encouraging. On Real Money Pro, Lee laid the groundwork for why investors may not want to be bearish. Much like in 2023, Lee points toward the progress that's being made in, in wrestling inflation lower. That's a joke. <laughs> In my humble opinion, looking at the Fed data, knowing what I know, that is a joke <laughs> as certain prices continue to skyrocket because how do you negate food and energy? The two most important things for people to live. That, that's ridiculous. But let's keep going from a peak above 9 percent. And it says the wrestling inflation lower from a peak about peak above 9 percent in June 22, 2022 to about 3 percent now. According to Lee, moderate increases in prices for goods and services will continue next year. Underpinning moderate increases in prices. Lee. Oh, Lee. 
I was out recently and I saw some things, Lee. I usually don't, but I saw some things, Mr. Lee. And let me tell you, the increases were not moderate. They weren't. Now, it was nothing for me to be concerned about, but it definitely was eye-catchingly. It wasn't moderate, but we can agree to disagree. It says here, I lost my place. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Lee isn't convinced that a high price to earnings P.E. ratio alone is a problem. It says, quote, we see P.E. expanding in 2024 towards 20 X, unquote, writes Lee, quote, while many argue for valuation compression since 1937, the highest P.E. is realized when yields yields are 3.5 percent to 5.5 percent when between 4 percent to 5 percent P.E. is um, uh, less than. Oh, 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 sorry about that. Greater than 18x, 65% of the instances, unquote. The 10 year, and this is why I tell people, watch the treasury. I hope people listen out there. Watch the US, it's very important. Those yields affect everything. But let's keep going. It says the 10 year treasury yield is currently 4.25%, down from 5% in October. That's helping ease mortgage rates, which peaked above 8% earlier this quarter, but are now about 7%. If Lee is correct, then a higher valuation could propel stocks because he also expects earnings per share EPS to be greater next year. All right, we're going to stop right there. So we will be back. I'm going to I'm going to attempt to get in the afternoon stellar video. And we will be back in the evening, as usual, to give you the best of the best evening crypto news. Appreciate every single one of you out there. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for subscribing, watching, being my, my YouTube family. And I will see you later. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with this. So until next time, folks, let's get to the money.